Hello, family, and welcome to another episode of Role Model Experts Cafe. I'm your host, Dr. Elder Parent Whisper, and today with me, I have an amazing human being, a gentleman that I have had on my summits before, and I'm very proud to introduce him to you. Thank you guys for joining us, Dr. Francis Valla. Thank you and welcome to Experts Cafe. I'm really glad to have you here. I know you're busy, uh, but I wanted to, our audience of parents to kind of figure out and know what it is that you do and why this is such an important thing that it needs to be on their radar. Um, so welcome to the show and please tell us a little bit more about how you got involved in this in the first place. Thanks so much, Dr. L. And it's great to see you and great. To, uh, thanks again for having me. Uh, yeah, it's an honor to be here, and uh, I've known you for, I guess, over uh, a year now, and uh, been quite impressed with the kind of work that you are trying to do, uh, the, try the impact you're trying to make in people's lives and in this world, and that's, I would say, probably the main reason that I see that alignment in our vision. Right. Absolutely. So one of the things that we often talk about is how we can impact the future of humanity through what happens at home with uh, parents and parenting. Uh, now, you share some, some of these similar passions as I do. Uh, tell our audience members uh, your specific focus and your expertise, please. Sure. I've got a couple of different hats, Dr. L, as you may know. I'm a medical weight loss doctor. Um, a bariatrician or obesity medicine doctor. That's one of my main hats. Uh, I'm also a certified master life coach. And my third hat is an entrepreneur in the healthcare field. So we're developing this technology platform, mainly in the health and wellness and personal development industry, uh, trying to come up with different projects that can impact people's lives. Right. So part of the reason I have you here is because I know that like childhood obesity is on the rise. And one of the things that happens to be affected is the fact that the parents' lifestyle and habits oftentimes becomes incorporated into the children's lives. And many times parents are super busy and the first person that gets sacrificed is themselves and their lifestyle and their eating, right? All of those goes out the window. And the trouble with that is that that leaves them less supported internally to be able to help their family be there for their family. And also when the kids look at it, it's one thing to say, hey, don't eat this food or eat this food. It's another to see it in action and getting the exposure to healthy stuff. Um, so it's important to understand how to find support when it comes to this important topic. It's important for them to understand how to implement it into day-to-day -day life. And you obviously have expertise in that. And you and I share this passion that we wanna reach a broader audience than just private practice. So here we are in the online world trying to make a difference outside of the healthcare system. And of course, this is not medical advice, but this is information that people can take home and implement so long as there's no pre-existing condition. Uh, so for, it's important for our audience members to know that as well. Um, so how did you get involved in this in the first place yourself? Well, um, um, unfortunately, I, I lost my dad at the age of 62. He had a massive heart attack uh, without showing any signs of previous heart disease. The only problem he had was obesity. And that was a major risk factor for his heart disease. And I was a doctor at the time. You can imagine how devastated I was. I mean, I had signed up to become a doctor to save people's lives. And I had, uh, I, I did by that time, I had saved hundreds or maybe thousands of lives and make it, made a difference, but I could not save my own dad's life or at least defer um, so that was a big impact and a wake up call for me uh, that made me really think and, and revisit my path and my career. I realized that uh, I am sort of um, bound by a curative system. Uh, I'm functioning in a, in a system that's not exactly an ideal system from my perspective anyways. It's a curative system, system as opposed to a preventative system. I mean... Uh, it is much easier and, and uh, cost effective to prevent many of these diseases like heart attacks, strokes, uh, types of uh, many different types of cancer, chronic diseases, 
Uh, and we, we have the tools and knowledge to do that, but the system is not designed to do that. And that's not what I signed up for. I had signed up to keep people healthy right. as much as possible. But I realized that what we are really doing as doctors is we're waiting for people to get sick and then come to us. Right. And that is not an ideal system. In other words, I always tell people that we have a sick care system, not a healthcare system. Right. And now in BC in Vancouver, we, our even sick care system is in trouble. But my point is that I realized that it is much better to prevent as early as possible. Look for early signs of uh, the development of impairments. Many of these conditions don't happen overnight. They happen over years and sometimes decades. And we have a, a window of opportunity to, uh, to look at that, uh, to find these signs and symptoms at the subclinical stage. So I use the traffic light analogy. If you think of the disease stage at the red zone, the yellow zone is the pre-disease stage and the green zone is the healthy stage. We ideally we want to keep people in the healthy zone. But as many times they gradually go from the green to the yellow to ultimately the red, many times our op window of opportunity is the yellow zone to, for early detection and early intervention. And we miss that because we don't have a proper system in place to inform people and the public are not in general, uh, there's a lot of misinformation and over-information. They may not be properly informed to take action and know when to see the doctor, when to intervene. Mm -hmm. So I've shifted my career in the last uh, two decades or over 20 years I've, I've been working on this uh, platform um, to see, is it possible to come up with a systematic way a system that uh, using technology, using our knowledge and um, networking and online um, channels to inform people to take action in a systematic way to prevent diseases such as heart attack, strokes, cancer. And through this process, I realized that, oh, the system that we are building, now I call this the heat system, HEAT stands my, uh, for um, Human Empowerment and Transformation, which is my technology company that we're building. Mm -hmm. This HEAT system not only applies to chronic diseases or physical diseases, such as heart attack, cancer, or stroke, but the same system with some minor modifications can be applied to many other illnesses like mental illnesses and social illnesses as well. And that's how I sort of, it was, it was, uh, I would say probably, uh, unfortunately, this tragedy, my, my dad's death was one of the major aha moments and the beginning of my personal transformational journey and my career change towards this platform and this preventional and educational platform, I would say. I, I love it. Um, you mentioned about your dad. I, I actually remember now, this is funny because I'm a grown man at this point, but I do go back when I think back at my childhood, one, I missed one of my birthdays because my great uncle passed away due to obesity again. And my mom was devastated in the process and happened to be right around my birthday. So it affects us in ways that we don't even think about it. But to this day, Absolutely. I remember the birthday that I missed as a result of that. So not a big deal in, in hindsight when we look at it, but it's big enough that I remember it basically. So, uh, and it affects children the same. So I am super excited about the technology component that you have brought into this. I've been witness to hearing the details of it and it's fascinating. Uh, well, let's talk about that in just a little bit. But in general, when people come to you and they have these concerns regarding their health and wanting to be in the green zone and shifting from being more preventative, uh, what are the typical challenges that you see that they need to overcome uh, beyond just healthy eating? things that get in the way of healthy eating? Well, I think one of the biggest challenges, Dr. L, is the, uh, the lack of information. And the, uh, there's a lot of misinformation. 
there's a lot of over information and there's a lot of under information. All of these are bad. Right. What is needed is the right amount of the right information. I love it. Right. So, and this is the biggest challenge. You know, I still see, I, I would say probably 99% of the people who come to me, I mean, I deal with adults. Don't, don't, uh, uh, I just wanted to emphasize that. However, you mentioned about child obesity, child obesity, a large percentage of them continue into their adult life as obese patients. And it's not the obesity itself that kills people. It's the complications and obesity leads to over hundred complications. Right. So one of the, about 90%, or, or I would say over 90% of my patients still do not see obesity as a disease. It's a medical chronic progressive disease. It's a very complicated metabolic disease. And they think that they can manage it with just eat, eating healthy and exercising more, uh, but they don't see that the, uh, they see it very different than right. diabetes and many other chronic diseases. And I asked them, do you think you can treat diabetes with uh, a diet and exercise alone? Do you think you can treat cancer? Do you think you can treat heart attack, chronic liver disease, chronic kidney disease? No, you can't. It's a medical disease. Um, so I find that there's a lot of information. That's, I would say probably the biggest challenge is the lack of proper information. Right. So hence, one of the reasons I feel compelled to speak out as somebody who has the information, I don't wanna just sit in my office and not share that with the public. Right. So unfortunately, they're not getting it from the right places. They're getting their information from Dr. Google, from the media, and I would say majority of the information they're getting is either incomplete, misinformation, over-information, or under-information. I agree. I agree. And then there is this uh, advice that gets passed around in your social circles. And I, it always flabbergasts me how, you know, I literally give a medical advice to someone and then they're like, yeah, but I saw this thing on TV that said this, exactly. or my friend said that. So it's yeah. really interesting to see that. And I don't right. blame people, Dr. L. It's uh, like I say, there's a lot of over, over information. And unfortunately, uh, especially these days with the social media, I see uh, there seems to be sometimes a, a loss or lack of trust in the medical profession. Uh, and part of it is because of the complexity of the systems. Again, I would say my answer to anybody who has doubts and skepticism, I say, well, what is, what is the alternative? Still in the big picture, I'm not saying it's perfect, we are far from perfect, but still the best and most reliable and most trustworthy organization as a community, as an organization are the doctor and the medical professions right. that can give you medical advice. Right. And it's important to understand that because your health is not a singular issue with a single system, you need a network. And that is where the medical system really shines. The fact that there is a community of professionals that can work together, communicate together. And that's something that's often lacking when you talk about things that are out there and they're working independently of everything else, basically. So it's really, really important in that sense. So thank you for clarifying that. Now, one other thing that I really like about your system is that, like you said, it doesn't focus on just one aspect of what you need to do to address obesity, but there's this multimodal approach in your, uh, in your process. So tell us a little bit more about that. Right. So uh, we take a biopsychosocial spiritual approach towards diseases, especially chronic diseases, one of them being obesity and the, uh, and the related complications of obesity, of course, diabetes, 14 types of cancer, heart disease, etc. Most of these, like you mentioned, Dr. L., the human system is a very, very complex system. And if we, we cannot... Um, we cannot address a multifactorial or multidimensional problem with a single solution. We need to come up with a multidimensional or multifactorial approach. 
So that's how we look at obesity. We just look at it like many other similar conditions. And in order to do that, now in the, in the medical field, as um, the vast majority of the doctors, they are pretty familiar with the physical and with the mental aspects of that, but it's even bigger than that. You know, one of the things that we may be missing is how do other factors like social factors, your poverty level, your economical level, even your spiritual health, your social health, your relationship health, your financial health, all of these, how do they play a role into obesity or other chronic diseases? Right. So I found as a doctor, that's one piece that we may not get the full picture. We're getting quite a significant amount of uh, information when we're doing our assessments, but it's mostly, mostly focused on one aspect, the body, yeah. or a little bit from the mind. So part of this heat system is we have redesigned the life, the human system into four pillars, the body, mind, soul, and social aspects. So you or each individual has the body, mind, and soul, and anything outside of the individual, like falls under the social aspects, their relationship with other people, their relationship with the world, their relationship with their the economic, uh, um, you know, their finances, their career, et cetera, et cetera. All of those fall, fall under the social aspect umbrella. So we use this heat system and our technology to gather more information than the average doctor obtains. We wanna understand and have, analyze how, do, how does obesity affect uh, somebody's relationship? How does obesity or other chronic diseases affect your um, sex life, your financial life, your spiritual life? Right. So it's a and bigger picture. It's, a, it's a, I would say, uh, as comprehensive and complete as possible right. to get all the information in a systematic way. Right. And what I love about it is that it's not like some people are not aware that in this particular case, obesity has these other connections and afflictions with it. Uh, so they, it's not just about how you look in the mirror, but there's a lot more to it uh, that affects things that you might not think is related. So I really like it. And you have something really cool uh, that we're gonna actually share with our audience members, which is uh, your gift. Uh, so tell us a little bit more about this gift and then we'll go from there. If you don't mind, I'm just uh, <laughs> I'm yeah. running out of battery. I'm just gonna charge this for one second. Sure. The uh, most critical and I would say instrumental tools or elements as uh, of this heat system is uh, what we call the ultimate human potential scale. Now, if you ask many people, like how much of your human potential overall uh, of these four pillars, basically, have you achieved in life? How much of your cup of life is full and how much of that is empty? I've asked this uh, over, over a thousand people in the last decade, and it's always a guess, right? 10%, 5%, 50%. You know, it's mostly intuitive, but there's no, to my knowledge, there has never ever been a proper tool that could give you an accurate number, like 47%, like 23%. And not just that, not just accurate, but based on science and evidence and objective metrics. So we designed that and it's called the human potential scale. Now our students and, and clients and, and the patients can tell you they have achieved, you know, 49%, 52% of their full human potential. Um, it's like asking, like, how much do you weigh? And they say, well, I think I weigh uh, 250 pounds. Well, why not 253? Well, I don't know. I don't have a scale. I can't tell you exactly. Right. So that's has been missing in the human potential industry. And we have designed that. And what I want to share with you and the audience today is just that. So this uh, for free, uh, basically, I've, I'll share a link uh, that you can share with the audience. They can just go and they can sign up uh, to our website for free. Again, 
and get access to this extremely powerful tool. And there are some guidelines that can help, uh, explain um, how to score their human potential to give them an idea of where they are in, their, in the spectrum of their physical health, in the spectrum of their mental health, social health, spiritual health, and where are they in the spectrum of overall health and wellness. It's beautiful. It's very elegant. I love the Thank design you. of it too. Uh, so guys, I'm going to put the description and the uh, description. I'm going to put the link in the description for you guys. And Dr. Vala, do you mind saying what your website is for audience members who might be driving and listening to this? <laughs> sure. Again, it's, it's called heatacademy.com. Heat stands for uh, H-E-A-T, Human Empowerment and Transformation. Heatacademy.com is the website. Awesome. Thank you. So very, very important, guys, as we discussed, this is something that you want to make sure that you have a professional on your side. This is something that you want to make sure that you seek support in. Uh, and it could be insidious, its effects, uh, things that you might not be aware of, but really affecting your potential, your kid's potential. And I know that every parent wants their children to lead a full and happy life. Um, so why not role model that for them and make them see what it actually looks like? So this is a beautiful design that you can go ahead and take advantage of. So go to the description box, click on the link, and you go to the website and all the other information that Dr. Vala has uh, included. If you have not subscribed already, be sure to click subscribe on the channel so you get notified of all the experts that come here sharing their expertise and in this particular case, gifts. Um, so that you can actually do things without doing all the heavy lifting yourself and teaching the kids that it is okay to reach out and ask for help. That asking for support and connecting to people is a normal and healthy and important part of life. Uh, and Dr. Vala, once again, I know you're super busy. Thank you for spending the time being with us. Any final words for our audience members before we finish? Um, I just want to uh, emphasize the importance of prevention. Uh, you know, take take uh, early uh, childhood obesity is is a big problem. Take that serious problem, please. And uh, I would emphasize early intervention, early detection, and early intervention. If you don't act soon enough, that can lead to a cascade of ongoing problems and a lot of wasted human potential that leads to many illnesses, not just physically, like heart attacks, etc., but also mentally socially and spiritually as well okay. so act early as much as possible please beautifully said thank you so much i appreciate it Until thanks again time. for having me dr l great to see you bye bye, -bye now